this presentation is on Microsoft Excel and Excel is a beast of a program. It is capable of so much more than just uh, performing calculations. You can use it for websites. Uh, you can create a whole program uh, right into Microsoft Excel. Uh, and then you can also use it as a calculator. It's a working brain, basically, uh, Microsoft Excel. I usually use it for web design and database administration and then I think probably some faculty use it uh, still to export grade books into and then staff I know there's all different kinds of ways that it's used for inventory management or uh, maybe financial data charting uh, anything to that nature it's used quite often because I'm not sure what everybody's skill level is it's hard to come in and do an hour training not knowing if someone has any experience or who has a lot of experience so instead, I have uh, came up with my top 10 list. I guess I'm doing my own David Letterman in this training. But I have a top 10 of must-knows for Microsoft Excel. And I'm going to start that in this training and see how many I can get through. And if I can't get through them all, we'll pick up on them on the next training. But there are top, there's my, my personal top 10 things that I feel like you must know in Microsoft Excel. And these are based on questions that I've received from faculty and staff. They're based on what I've seen in the HLC document that's came through with charting practices, the inventory spreadsheets that I've seen at the library. Um, uh, different documentation that I've looked at on T Common. There's a lot out there. Uh, I've seen lots of different Microsoft Excel documents, so I've kind of taken what I've seen and compiled this list of 10 tools that could make these documents better or more efficient, I should say, because we're still kind of sticking to that working smarter um, philosophy and not working harder. So Microsoft Excel is, like I said, a calculator. And if you want to follow along, you can. If you're not very experienced with Excel, it might be better to focus on the training and then go back and review it on your own time. Uh, but if you are experienced, feel free to follow along. I just don't want you to get caught up on my number one and we don't get to the number uh, three on the list. So just kind of work, work along or uh, work independently however you'd like. When you open up Microsoft Excel, uh, we do have ribbons up at the top just like we do in Word. And I've went ahead and opened up the developer uh, ribbon because that's one that we'll use a lot in Microsoft Excel. And remember that developer ribbon can be found under the file menu by selecting options and then putting a check mark beside developer in the customized ribbon. Uh, once you do that, you won't ever have to do that again. But in the previous trainings, we've talked about how important the developer toolbar is. And so I went ahead and added that up at the top. You might also see add-ins and then the final uh, tab which is new in 2010 it's called team and this is what I uh, have included in one of my top 10 items the very last item that we'll talk about probably next week but this is how to collaborate documents together with other people so you can work on the same thing you can hide specific formulas but you can work on the same document at the exact same time and as someone is making changes it will change the color so you know that uh, Terry might be pink, um, you know, and, and I might be blue, so whatever changes I make, it would come up with my name and then whatever color. So collaboration is a huge feature in Excel. So we're going to start basic and we're going to kind of work our way up because I'm not sure where everybody's learning level is. But Microsoft Excel, again, is a huge calculator. So if you put your cursor in any of these cells, then you could hit the plus sign. And that is uh, an indicator to Excel to uh, perform a calculation. So I could do 5 plus 5, press Enter, and get an answer. Okay, so it's always working in the background. It's just a huge brain. You can zoom in at the bottom and I will so it's easier to see what I'm doing uh, for the video but just kind of keep in mind that anytime you want to perform a calculation it's always there and, and will be working with you addition of course is the plus minus is a hyphen multiplication is an asterisk division is a forward slash so uh, divided by two and there you go if you wanted to edit a formula you would put your cursor uh, in that cell and press F2 
F2 is the shortcut that will uh, allow you to edit the formula. So then you could go in and move your cursor around and change the numbers around. Of course, you can press Enter to accept those changes or hit Escape to not accept and you can continue editing. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that and just highlight it and hit delete to get rid of that content. I did make a handout for you and if you're watching the video and would like to get a copy you can email me at acatterson at neosha.edu. Come on in. Come on over here and sign in and then I have a couple of handouts here for you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're fine. Uh, another um, little shortcut that I shared with you in future uh, past trainings is the little access bar up here at the top and if you wanted to add your own controls to the access bar you can uh, easily do that by uh, selecting the drop down and then uh, choose more commands and you can add more to this quick access toolbar often I'll work with this toolbar underneath the ribbon uh, instead of above it so you could put show below and this is how I like to work in it uh, right here below instead of all the way at the top but everyone has a, a different preference but you can move that around to above or below my access toolbar in my office goes all the way across I think I've got 40 or 50 different little buttons on there that I use often uh, it gets it gets to be kind of a pain to go through all of these ribbons and try to find what you're looking for it's nice to have those shortcuts available all right, and as you know, um, Excel is fairly smart. If you were to type in a month, for example, and if you put your cursor on that particular cell, there's a fill handle in the right-hand corner. And if you just move right on top of that fill handle, your mouse will turn into a, a cross. And if you click and hold and drag, whoops, excuse me, if you uh, click and drag to the right, it's going to continue that sequence. It auto-fills. It recognizes that you have a theme or a series is what it's referred to as in Microsoft Excel. So here you've got, it went ahead and filled finish that sequence for us and it will do that with anything if you've got some numbers that are going down you could highlight them and then do a fill down and it will go ahead and uh, complete that task so filling down is is our autofill is a great feature in Microsoft Excel uh, very nice shortcut when you're working with series of data right so I'm going to go ahead and take this off as well all right, um, <clears throat> there's a couple of ways that you can perform a calculation, and we're going to spend some time talking about calculations, but before we get there, let me just put in some sample data. I'm just adding, uh, uh, just making some numbers here up. Now, if I wanted to sum all of these, there is a shortcut in the far right-hand corner. There's a little drop-down. It's right up here at the top. It's the mathematical expression uh, for sum. And you could select that, and it would automatically highlight what you want to sum. You would press Enter, and it would total it for you. Okay, so that's kind of a shortcut, but if you didn't know how to do it, the formula begins with an equal sign, and I'm going to write it out uh, in case you've never written one before. You'll need to know it if you do some advanced Excel editing in the future. All formulas begin with equals, mm -hmm, equals, and then you have a function. Do you want to sum it? Do you want to find the average? Do you want to min, max? There's count. There's a little over 550,000 functions. It's a lot. It's capable of doing a lot. It will calculate loan interest and bank payments and there are some medical calculations, medical dosage calculations that it will figure. It has algebra equations in it. It's got calculus built into it. There are tons and tons of functions. And if you wanted to uh, learn all about those functions, you can click more functions and it would show you an entire library of functions that are available for it. Uh, some of your stats courses will even have an add-in package that it will put into Excel with even more functions. Uh, and if you don't have some of the functions you're looking for, you can download them on Microsoft.com. There are many different packs you can download, and they're called add-ins. So you can put them and expand the capabilities of your program even further. So I'm going to uh, just type some because I happen to know that one. That's the fairly easy one to remember. And as you type it, it goes ahead and gives you some other ones that might begin with SUM. So if you can't remember what you're looking for, but you know the first letter, they give you a little uh, cheat sheet. 
And then comes the operators, which is an open parentheses, uh, open parentheses. And then there's a few ways that you can select the data that you want to add. You can actually type in B2 plus B3. Nobody call out bingo. I hate it when students do that. B4, okay, and so forth. And it will highlight what cells you're referencing. Or you could do a range. And instead of doing an addition, you would separate it by a colon. So you're doing a range, B2 through or range B5. So then it makes a selection B2, B2 through B5. And then you could close the operator like so. Press enter. Surprise, you get the same information. No matter how you select to create the formula, whether it be up at the top or down below, uh, it's written the exact same way either place. But it's important that you know how to write the formula because uh, if you look at some of the shortcuts I provided you on the handout, there's quite a few formulas there that you're going to have to learn how to write if you want to do some advanced features. So if you know the basics of the formula, uh, these other ones will come in and you'll understand how to write them a little better uh, as, you, as you learn. All right, so I told you that I have a top 10 list, so I guess we'll get started with that. I'm doing a little David Letterman sequence in this training, and I have compiled a top 10 list of what I think uh, is the most important information to know in Microsoft Excel. Uh, first of all, I've seen a lot of people uh, with their documents, a lot of staff uh, time stamp their documents, and they're actually writing it out. They're typing in June 19th. Um, that's fine, but, but there's a better way of doing it that will automatically update every time the document opens. And there's a couple of formulas for that, and I think I've given them to you on the shortcut feature. Um, they should be in there somewhere. Uh, but if not, here they are. It's equals... You would type in the word today, and then you would put parentheses at the end of it and press enter, and that will give you today's date. Okay, And then tomorrow, if you were to open up Microsoft Excel, it would say June 20th instead of the 19th. It's going to automatic update for you. Some of the HLC charts that I've seen, um, also they had uh, typed in the time and the date that it was made, but there's another function for that. You can do now instead of today and put parentheses around it, and it will date and time it for you. So you get the date and the time stamp. So those are two shortcuts that I think are helpful. A lot of faculty and staff are just typing in the date. You could do it this way and that way you ensure that it updates automatically uh, and they're, every time they open it they're having to type in when it was last revised. You know, that's kind of a pain to have to do so if you insert it this way it will automatically update for you. So I think that's probably one of the easier things uh, on my top 10 list. Everything else gets a little more heated as we go. So any questions so far about top 10 list? The creation date, though, if you wanted to know when it was originally done? Well, you would, well, sure, under properties, you could always find out when it was created. Um, you can see that it was created at 152 today, okay. this document was. But if you wanted to put on the document itself when it was created, then you would want to type it uh, so it doesn't update. Oh. Right. Yep. All right, so I'm going to take these off, and we're going to move along to my number two. Um, and for this, I have a sample data file that I'm going to use because I needed to have something to show uh, data in here. And I've made just a really simple Moz cards and GIFs. Isn't it cute? thought you would appreciate that. Um, if you have some very confidential information in here and you do not want to share it, <clears throat> you can uh, tell it to hide rows and columns so when you print certain information won't be printed. If you had salary information or employee IDs or something that's confidential that you didn't want to share, uh, you could do that just by hiding rows and columns. So if I wanted to hide, let's say, the gift wrap call, uh, row, I would select it by clicking on this number seven and that highlights the entire row and then I want want to hide it, which is just right click and select hide. And that will hide it and you'll see it goes from six to eight. Okay, so then when I print it, that one row will not display. And that can be very effective. I've had several questions about this uh, even uh, in this past week about how to print an Excel document without 
certain information on it. So that's the best way to do it. When you're ready to uh, go back to the document, you want to highlight the row above it and the row underneath it. Right click again and just choose unhide. That will put it back. Okay. You can do the same thing with columns. If you want to hide all of these columns at the top, you just highlight them, select hide. It's hidden. You can right click and choose unhide most of the time. Right click and choose, um, and that's another thing too. Do you see this little gray box up here? If you select that gray box one time, it selects your entire document for you. So didn't know if you knew that, but that's a great um, resource. Uh, Control Z is a shortcut as well. Uh, that's undo, that's your best friend. So do not print uh, allows you to hide and unhide uh, rows, which I think is exceptional. All right, one of the things uh, that I find, if, you, if you're not a big formula junkie, but you want to create a simple math expression, you can do that without actually writing a formula. So I'd like to show you the steps and how to do that. Let's say, for example, in the fourth quarter here, our gift wrap actually went up quite a bit. It's actually 5% more. So I want to increase the value by 5%. Okay, so to do that, I would have to come up here and make this big formula equal sum and calculate it times 1.05, you know, to get my 5% increase. But instead, I'm just going to come out here to the right and type in 1.05 because that's what I want to multiply by. Okay, all right, now I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to control C to copy. And these shortcuts are all found on your uh, handout as well. After you copy it, then what we're going to do is just come back over here and select the fourth quarter gift wrap because that's where we're going to paste it. But we're not going to paste the value, we're going to paste a formula. Okay? It's called paste function, <clears throat> which is one of my uh, top 10 must know hows. It's called paste function. All right, so under paste up here at the top, we have all of these beautiful options that we can paste. We can paste the value, which we don't, it'd just be 1.05, it would be silly to do that. Or we could go down to the bottom and select paste special. <clears throat> when we choose paste special, we could choose any of these top options, which is a formula. Do we have a formula over here? No, it's just a value. And we really don't want to paste any of that because it doesn't mean anything. It's not going to do anything. So instead, we can give it an operation. So we can tell it to multiply that cell by 1.05. So I'm going to select OK. And then there it is. So if you look at my value, there's no formula up there. I just did a simple calculation. You know sometimes when you delete something in Microsoft Excel, then the value goes away, <laughs> you know, because it's referenced. Not in this. When we're done, we just have to delete it. The value stays the same because all we did was did a paste special and told it to multiply this with this. Yeah, absolutely. You just highlight it all instead of just one cell. Now, because it's a value, you know, you won't have a formula there. So you'll have to remember, did I multiply that by 5%? <laughs> you know, you have to make a note to yourself or you may not remember if you've done it or not. So keep that in mind. But to me, the paste function is the best way to go about it. If you want a simple calculation and you want it now, uh, that's the easiest way to do it. You can just type in what you want to multiply by. And I did have a question. I was showing this to somebody else. And I know that all of you know this, but I did 1.05 because I want to add it back to itself. If I wanted just 5%, it would only be uh, 300 and some dollars, you know, added to that. So the reason I did 1.05 is so it would add it back to itself. So you could do 10% or 15 or, you know, whatever your uh, liking is. And it doesn't have to be multiplication, right? You could have done something else. Uh, maybe we were going to divide it by 5. We could just copy, come back over here, go back up to paste special again. And we could divide, too. There's also add and subtract. 
So maybe we just want to add or subtract to it. But one of the things I, I saw someone doing the other day was they were writing down the number in their spreadsheet and then they would erase it and then look at their paper and retype it and multiply it by 1.05 or something. You know, they'd have to remember what they wrote there to make their formula. And I thought, well, this is one function that I could see you using most often is you don't have to erase what's already there. So it's paste special, and then you're uh, actually pasting an operation into it. Okay? All right. I would like to show you uh, what I think is my wow factor of the presentation. <coughs> All right. <coughs> so this is one area that I uh, get a lot of interest in, and that is those silly fillable forms. We love them. And we've doing, I'm doing a lot of them, especially in the areas of nursing. And I showed you how to do those in Microsoft Word. But there's actually some things you can do in Excel that will save your life, I promise you. One of those is making just a simple drop-down menu in Excel. And to do this, I'm just going to type in some data. Um, well, let's just do autofill to save me some time. And let's say I want each of these to be a drop-down menu, okay? And I have January through July, so I've got the first uh, six months or so. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select that first cell. And the term for a drop-down menu in Microsoft Excel is called data validation. Data validation is what you want to look for. Okay, data validation is found under the data tab up at the top on the ribbon. <coughs> and it's towards the, kind of towards the end section, it's called uh, data validation down here. And I'm going to go ahead and select it one time and then I have some options. And I've got some criteria here. For a drop down, you always want to select list. Okay for a drop down menu. Everyone knows what I'm referring to a drop down. It's this little, this is a drop down menu right here where I'm clicking and then I have some items to choose from. That's what we're making. So I'm going to select list and then it asks me what the source is. So I'm going to select this little uh, indicator right here and it says highlight what you want to include in this list. So I'm going to select it, all of my headings, and then I will select it again. And then you can give it an input message, which I love to toy with people with this. Uh, if you have faculty under you, you'll love this. You can put in a title like, click here to select one. And then if they don't select one, if they choose to skip it, you can give them an error, a little warning. That's my favorite part. You can give them a stop or a warning. Sometimes I'd like the warning the best. There's information. We'll choose warning. And then I'd like to put in my own message. Hello. Did you not see my directions? Something silly. And then you choose OK, and then look what happens. Oh, here's my wow factor. Cool. See that? I'm going to zoom in. Now, instead of having um, each of these listed out, I could get rid of all these, right? And I could just have a nice little drop down that they could choose from. So that happened in April, or that happened in June. Nice. Now, what if you don't want to um, base it on something that's already here. Maybe you have some new content. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to just take all this off. Goodbye. Okay, go to a different cell. All right, I'm going to choose this data validation again. And I still want to choose a list because I'm working with drop downs. Next week we'll work with some of these other features, but just for today, I won't wow you too much. We'll stick with list. And then I don't have anything in my document, so I'm going to type in my own list. And I can do that right under the source tab. So maybe this is going to be um, uh, choosing a department for the college. So I'm going to type in online campus. And then you separate them with a comma and a space. So comma space. And then maybe um, Ottawa. Online space. And Chanute. Online space, independence. Is 
that it? Is there more? Four. Okay, that's good. Okay, so I can make the same input message. I could put a title and an input message here or a little error if I wanted to and then select OK and then I have the same drop down but I built it custom. I didn't have any other text there. Do you see how that could be used? Think about the space you could save in your Excel document by doing that. You don't have to get those columns and rows lined up just perfectly with a drop down. You could throw it anywhere. There's no organization uh, that really matters. Now, the best thing about having a valid um, uh, validation is this. I'm going to do it one more time. Actually, maybe even a couple more times. We'll see. This is a, a true document that came through the other day for nursing. They wanted a list where they could put in one comma, two comma. They want to rank uh, outcomes and assessments. So here we got one through five. Okay. And I'm going to put in a title so I know where, what this is. Choose. Uh, let's put rank. All right, so here we have a list of values. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it. So now I can actually have someone choose two, three. They can choose different values from these, right? But you can still do a formula from a drop down. So maybe you want to calculate the average equals average parenthesis. It doesn't act like they're drop downs. It acts like it's actually a value. Okay, divided by mm -hmm, four. Whoops. I already said average, didn't I? So it's giving me the average now 3.25. If I change the drop downs, it changes my average. Is that making sense? <laughs> Clicking? Are you thinking, now how can I do this on my document? And I've got this document and I need to change it on this one. I hope the wheels are turning a little bit as you think about this. If, if, I, um, if you remember some of the documents I showed you from the good and the bad examples from last week, you know, think of some of those little drop downs that I showed you. This, this would be a, a breeze. You could put in uh, your text over here and then your rank on top. You could actually make a really nice spreadsheet off of this and it doesn't take a whole lot of time once you build those drop downs in there. Are we good here? You guys, I'm just blowing you away, I guess. Okay. Um, referring back to this handout, I just wanted to take a little break here and show you the rest of these formulas on the left hand side. I have categorized them into the categories that you would find them under Excel and these are just some sample formulas that I think you would use the most often but they start at conditional there's a lookup, date time, financial, statistical, math, counting, conversion and text and all of these formulas um, I have went ahead and and typed them out of my my head so I hope they all work. I didn't actually go through and test them all but if you ever see an A2 or a B2 uh, I just type that in. It could be any cell. You would put in your own information there but that's just to show you that that's where the cell would go that you are uh, converting. Um, one of the um, items that I thought was very helpful is probably under the text and the conversion where you can convert days to hours and hours uh, to minutes and, and vice versa. I've seen several documents come through that have had uh, manual calculations on them so that's one way that you could uh, use the uh, formulas. And then on the right hand side is tons of shortcuts and I know I've showed several of them in Microsoft Word and all of these will work in Microsoft Word as well but I didn't know if you were uh, shortcut junkies or not but if you are there's quite a few uh, here that you can practice with uh, probably the F5 is the one I use the most it's the go-to item um, uh, 
control shift F is font. Uh, you'll get the practice of using them. Um, so I wanted to provide this little handout. Next week I'm going to do a back to this and there will be more formulas and uh, uh, more information in Excel and I hope I can laminate them. You know, not so you can use them as a placemat, but as you can use them in your office and it'll be slick so you can, you know, yeah, keep it, not lose it. Okay, <clears throat> we haven't talked a lot about formatting yet, but uh, I wanted to bring this other document up here that I just had. Moz. And I wanted to show you how you could freeze your columns. Uh, have you done that before? Freezing columns or uh, splitting the screen? I don't know if you've done that. Some yes, some no. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you how to do that. Um, this can all be found, let's see, under the view menu. Go to view and you'll find it towards the right hand side. You have a new window. You also have the freeze panes and the split panes. If you choose to split, I'm going to go ahead and select that one time, you'll get these uh, vertical and horizontal bar. So maybe if you want to lock your left hand side into you know, one area and then your bottom side you want to, you know, scroll around. You're basically just splitting your screen in half so you can see the top part of your document and the bottom part of your document. And you can move the split. You just drag and drop the bars and where you want to position them at. Do you see that? Um, Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Sometimes if I work in that a while, it tends to get to me. I seem to think I have four documents open instead of just one. But if you're looking at something at the very top of a document, it's nice. Or if you have different sheets, uh, you can open up different sheets in that same document as well. So I'm going to remove it. You can also freeze the pane. You can highlight the area that you want to freeze. And there's a freeze panes icon under view. And you could select freeze pane, and you see how the top portion stays, but I'm scrolling through. So that's, that's another way that you can lock in your document and view it at different, different intervals. One of the, and to unfreeze, you just go back up to freeze and choose unfreeze panes to get rid of it all. One of the um, items that I like to work in the most probably is um, to view your window side by side. That's usually how I like to work. If you had multiple windows open, which I do, I have four documents open, you can view side by side anytime as long as you just come down to the taskbar and right click. You can choose uh, show windows side by side and it will, uh, well, if they're all open, I think all of mine are minimized. They all have to be open and active in order for you to do it. Let's try that again. Who's going to make a liar of me? Let's maximize here. So making a liar of me because I'm on tape. They all need to be maximized. I don't know why they're not doing that. Side by side. Usually it would show it side by side. So if you had a Microsoft Word up as well and you did show side by side, you know, you could see your documents right next to each other. So you could click in here and if you had text over here, you could drag it and drop it over here. So it's, it's a good way that you can work with two documents up side by side. Uh, and maybe you could if you did this. No, 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 it doesn't seem to enjoy my company. Interesting. So side by side is, is a good, good tool. I like to work in that view. I think up here at the top they might have an option where you can arrange your windows horizontally. There we go. Up here, arrange all. So you can put them horizontally or vertically and that way you can drag and drop from different documents. So freezing, splitting, uh, depending on you know what your preferences are. Uh, when I worked in the nursing documents I would have their copy up and then my copy up and I'd be looking at it side by side so I could make those changes and if uh, and when you begin editing your own documents you might want to do that as well. Copy and paste it over. Another element uh, that I find is a, a lot of folks aren't naming their sheets. Your sheets are at the very bottom of uh, Microsoft Excel. If you want to rename your sheet, you can right click on it and choose rename. 
and then you could give it a name, uh, data, whatever you want to call it. You can also uh, change the tab color and give it a particular interest so you can uh, mark it as you go to the other sheets. You'll see how that works. Um, if you have confidential information like students' grades, you can right-click it and select Protect the Sheet, which I will tell you, if you'd put a password on here, Microsoft Excel is horrible about this. Uh, there are so many pa password crackers out there online. You can download an Excel password cracker and it would tell you what the password is for your document. It's unbelievable. There's so many out, out there that are free that you can download to do. It really doesn't help your document too much in Excel. But you can protect your document, just not this way. I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. I'll show you how to protect it here in a minute. But if you were to put a password in here, uh, the next time you opened it, it would ask you for that password. If you don't remember it, you're in trouble uh, because there is no hint. There's no email that it's going to send you to reset it. it you're just out. <laughs> it's just delete and start over. So not probably the best option unless you write it down or uh, use something that you're going to know. Uh, so, okay, so there's some, just some general information there. Okay, let's go ahead, while we're talking about protecting and hiding your formulas, let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select uh, my formulas. And if you're not sure what has a formula and what doesn't have a formula, or if you want to select all of your formulas, um, you know, one way to do that is when you print, you can show all the formulas and not the values. You could do that. Or what I like to do is just highlight all of the formulas so I know what's a formula and what's not. Because the only way you're going to know is if you actually click in here and you look at the formula bar and say, oh, okay, that's a formula and that's just text that somebody inserts. Started. And then down here, that's a formula. So one way that you could do that is by using the Go, which is uh, your F5. If you click on F5 on your keyboard, or I think it might be Control G, but F5 is the shortcut that I like to use. And if you don't know what the reference is, which half the time I forget, I just click on Special down here at the bottom left-hand corner. And then you can select which of these do you want to find. Uh, so I'm going to select formulas. And when I choose formulas, I can choose what kind of formulas I want. I'll just choose them all and select OK. And it highlights for me everything that's a formula. Everything that's not a formula, it doesn't highlight. So we've got some highlighting going on. I know that all of this is a formula and then my bottom row is highlighted. It's hard to tell because my... Um, background is blue and white, but it did select it, okay? I could do just the same if I went back to the Go menu and I chose Special. I could choose Constant instead. Now watch my chart because you won't be able to see it unless you watch closely. I'm going to choose OK, and did you see it select it? Okay, those are constants. That's text that someone's actually typed in. Okay. But I want to protect my formulas. I don't want anybody to see my formulas. Uh, if you were to email this or send it out, somebody might be able to see that and you may not want them to see all of your formulas. Okay. So, and one reason why is you might be referencing a sheet that you don't want them to see, maybe wages or hourly pay or something that they have no business seeing. So you can protect your formulas and protect your document this way. So I'm going to go back and select my formulas again and select OK. So my formulas are all selected. And now I'm ready to format my cells. And while it's still selected, I'm going to right click on one of the cells that's highlighted. It doesn't matter which one. And select Format Cells. In this dialog box on the top right hand corner, there's a tab called Protection. And you'll see that it is locked up at the top and it's also hidden. I know it's hidden because I did this to this document previously, but normally it would not be checked. Both of these would be unchecked. So you would want to make sure that it's both locked and hidden. So if I were going to email it to Nancy and she opened it up, she wouldn't be able to see my formula. All she could see is the value. And that's a, a way to protect your document. You don't need a password for that. You know, so then you could save it um, and send it to somebody and they wouldn't be able to be able to view it. All right, so now that you've got it locked and hidden, 
All right. Now I'm going to choose OK. And now I can set a password and the uh, software can't bust through that. If it's locked and hidden, they can't bust through it. So then um, under the file menu, I can select to protect the workbook up here at the top. Uh, and this protect workbook can give you permissions. You can mark it as a final or encrypt it by a, with a password or maybe you just want to do one sheet. So I don't know if you work with many, uh, you know, uh, important information or confidential information that you don't want shared but in our in this time in society you really have to be careful about what you're sharing with other people especially if it's grades uh, anything to do with human resources uh, for employment purposes you really want to be careful about protecting what you put into these things because they can be shared very easily uh, so that's one way you can uh, prevent that from happening that's called locking your formulas all right, uh, one of the other entries I've seen, uh, Jim and I were working on a, a spreadsheet for HLC, and I noticed that there were some duplicate, duplicated entries. Somebody had accidentally typed a couple of things the same time, you know, many times throughout the document, not knowing it. So if we had maybe stationary was 1289 the first quarter, and the second quarter, and then uh, the fourth quarter. If I wanted to find out where my duplicated entries are, this is how you would do that. My, uh, another top 10 item. All right, so I'm going to select all of the data that I want to include in this duplicated um, entries here. And it's not going to be average or total because you're not typing those. Those are based on formulas. This would just be human error, uh, what we're looking for, constants. And to find this, you'd go up to the conditional formatting. How many of you have used the conditional formatting before? If you haven't, it's, it's uh, it, pretty nice. Uh, they have all different kinds of, of highlighting tools. They have data bars and color scales that you can use. Uh, there's some icons that you can set. If it goes below a certain number, do you see how my icons are changing? So stationary has a black dot because it's my lowest value. Uh, the green has green because it's the best, it's the wealthiest. So those little data sets are just visual aids that can help you know, look at your data and you can instantly see uh, if your data is in good standing or maybe not so good standing. It's a way you can sort through it. Uh, not just icons, but they have color scales too. See what happens when I choose a color scale. You'll see that some are red. Uh, white and blue displays different shades depending on the values. Red is good, uh, blue not so good. I have some data bars in here as well. Then they have uh, top and bottom rules and then the top one is just uh, regular highlights. So if you want to highlight uh, some cells you can see at the very bottom there's one called duplicate values. So if you select that and choose OK it's going to highlight all of the cells that are duplicated. So you can see if that was really a mistake or did we, was that really the correct amount. So it kind of calls it out for you and lets you to see what those duplicated amounts are. Questions so far? And these are just some things that I think that would help, you know, navigate in Excel and learn how to uh, manage your data a little better than maybe some of you have done in the past or maybe be uh, working smarter. If there's other things that you want to know, send me an email. I'll be happy to address them in the next training uh, by far. Um, a couple of uh, smaller things, smaller tips that you might not be familiar with is the best fit and anytime you have um, contents within a cell, you, if you want to best fit it and fit the contents, you can double click in between each of your columns. If you just double click one time, it'll best fit, it'll resize the column to fit the text. So that's kind of a, a fun one to do that doesn't take very much time and you can get the right dimensions. Another thing you can do is select the entire document with the gray box on the left and then double click in between one of the columns and it does the whole thing so you don't have to do every single column you can just do you know the whole Excel workbook at one time mm-hmm
What did you click on when you, when you had the whole thing highlighted? Yeah, that's this little gray box right to the left of A. And, and then just move your cursor in between uh, one of the columns. It doesn't matter which one because okay. they're all highlighted. And then if you double click between them and have that cross arrow, it will do the entire workbook. It'll best fit every column to fit. And every row? Um, yeah, it should do row too. Yeah. You want to be careful with that because we have this uh, image up here that's preventing it. You know, it's not locked into place by any means, so I'd have to resize it to fit the. Whoa, that's not what I want. You'd want to resize the image to fit. Let's do that. Mom's cards and gifts. So cute. All right, so that's best fit. Let's see, I've got maybe, that clock is way off. I think I've got about five minutes left before questions. Um, we've done the, we've done the skip from cell to cell. Uh, let's talk about formatting real quick. If you uh, notice that this has a uh, formatting applied to it. I didn't do that. I just chose uh, pre-formatted um, formatting, but I'm going to show you here. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste special. I just want the values. Anytime you want to do that, if you just use paste special, if you move your mouse over these paste special, it'll show you what it looks like with um, the formatting or with just text only or with the formulas. There are several ways you can paste it and if you're not sure, if you just move your mouse over it, it'll show you what it would look like if you were to paste it that way. So just FYI on that. So I'm going to choose this option and I'll go ahead and best fit. It's not very pretty, but it's got my data in it, and that's all that's really important is I've got the data in here. But if you're uh, like me and you're, you're kind of um, challenged when it comes to Excel and knowing what colors to choose, I'm always challenged. I never know how to make something look pretty in Excel. Uh, there's a shortcut for that. You want to select your data. You know, I care more about the content. You know, you got your content in there, now you got to present it. How are you going to make it look pretty? Uh, they do have this beautiful option right here in the middle on the right hand side called Format as Table. Lovely. You can select this little feature and then check out all these styles that they have. There's tons of different colors that you can uh, create. And if you had made a table in Microsoft Word, remember how I was showing you how to save it as a quick style in Microsoft Word? It would be down here under new table style. So if you saved it in Word, it carries over to all Office applications. So that's a kind of a nice little feature. I'm going to choose an ugly one. Uh, I'm going to go with green. And mine does not have headers, so I'm going to take that off of there and select OK. And then you've got this really ugly table uh, that has been, form that has been uh, formatted for you instantly with a click of a button. And because I did it based on a table, and that's really ugly. Let me choose something that's a little less ugly than that. Ooh, hideous. Okay, that's a little better. Let me zoom in. Because we format it as a table, we have these nice little drop down menus that allows us to sort our data. So we can sort this column from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. Each column can be sorted that way because it's a table and it won't interrupt anything else in the document. So when you format something as a table, there's some benefits to that. It allows you to sort through the data much easier than it would if it were not in a table. Of course, if you don't want it as a table, you don't have to have it. I'm undoing several times here. Let me zoom in. Anybody get these errors? Yes. Okay. These lovely errors. Yeah. Um, these little errors. I got a, a, a cute question the other day. I'm not cute, but somebody called and they were in a panic about these pound signs. And uh, I, sh I showed them. I said, well, you know, that's a really tough error you got there. You must have did a massive calculation. And the problem is when this happens, there's just not enough room in the cell for everything to display. So, you know, that's where that best fit can come in here. Handy. And um, I just click up here, select it all, double click, voila, there it is, like magic. You're just best fitting it so the contents fit within the cells. But instead of formatting it as a table, if you didn't want to do that, they do have some other options under the home. You can do cell styles. 
you know, they have some nice styles applied. Or you can do the conditional formatting as well. You could do uh, the icons if you wanted. Um, I like to use the icons because they're visual. And a lot of people, you know, enjoy seeing the, the visual aids on, on those because they get that instant um, satisfaction. They don't have to read too hard. The, the visual clues do it for them. So I like to use conditional formatting as much as possible. Or if you want to select non-adjacent cells, cells that aren't, uh, uh, I keep doing control minus and that's not a shortcut anymore in 2010. Control plus and control minus used to be zoom in, zoom out. And they took that shortcut out of 2010 and drives me nuts. I'm constantly doing control minus and it wants to delete a row and add a row. Like, that's not what I want. Um, but if you wanted to do alternate rows, that's also very nice. You can uh, select row one. And if you want to click on row three, what happens? The first row becomes deselected. So if you want to do non-adjacent cells, you have to hold the control key down, select row three, and then row five. And then you could go up and stylize them. They have a little paint bucket tool that you could go in and you know, alter the color on each of those rows and whatnot. So uh, there's, some, there's some formatting issues. And I, I really didn't uh, want to spend too much time on formatting because those same things apply in Microsoft Word. It seems like once you learn how to format something in Microsoft Office, it pretty much continues in all Office applications. There's still a fill handle. You still have the font boxes. Everything is just the same. Um, so keep that in mind that, you know, Microsoft, they, their system programs they work well together that way okay merging cells is one of the last things I wanted to leave you with here I'm going to add a new row and I could do control plus if I wanted to um, and you can um, insert and add rows or you can right click and choose insert and it will insert a row for you and if you want to do a title at the top Ma's cards. Um, and if the, the title goes over, you know, it's going to display it because there isn't anything in B. But if you want to make it big and you try to do this thing to make it as big as this column, it's not going to happen. Not going to work for you. So instead, you would want to highlight uh, all of the cells. And to do that, you hold down Shift and you use your cursor key and you can move to the right over to select it or you can use your mouse. The problem with using your mouse is if you start to click and drag, a lot of times people don't have the right arrow. See, if you get this arrow here, not the fat arrow, but just the crosshair arrow and you click and drag, you move it. And you don't want to do that. So I'm gonna undo. So instead, just hold down shift, right? Because that's to select. And then use your arrow keys to move over how many of her spaces you want. Just stay away from the mouse if you have problems with that. Don't, don't even go there. So now that I've got all of these cells uh, highlighted, there's an option called Merge and Center. And that's right smack dab in the middle of the home, uh, right up here at the top. So then when you choose that, A1 becomes a very long cell. It's the whole um, width there of your chart. And then you can adjust your row height or however you see fit, like so. And carry on. And make a background and you can jazz it all up if you'd like. Uh, there are, of course, tons and tons more of shortcuts. And I did not go over all of them because they're on this little handout. And instead of taking up my time, an hour, and your time going over them, uh, they're on here. So you can read and uh, see what different uh, shortcuts you want to use. Um, I think that there's some in here that you might really like, like Control D will do autofill. It will go aut automatically fill down for you so you don't have to drag the handle. I've had a couple of staff that have had issues getting the right fill handle and so I just say just do control D and it will go ahead and fill down for them so there are some things on here uh, that I hope that you'll find helpful again I'll add to it next week I'll add it back to this and there'll be some additional shortcuts next week we're going to focus on uh, charts We'll do some charting and also circular references, that dreaded little error that you get sometimes. But what we'll do is we'll take 
data from uh, multiple sheets, maybe from two or three sheets, and make a chart on sheet four based on all the other sheets. So by doing that, you're kind of starting to create more of a complex uh, spreadsheet. If you want to know how to do a macro, at the end of next week's training, I'll spend about 10 minutes setting that up for you and showing you how you can do that. But a macro would be a program that you could build within your own department and send to somebody else, like a vehicle request form that they would submit and the results would go someplace to a spreadsheet. So any questions about today's quick and fast one hour Microsoft Excel training. Yes, ma'am. It's nothing that you have said so far, but it's an irritation I have with, with Excel. What is the trick to opening your Excel files so that you can see two at the same time, so they don't flip off of the same? Is there a trick? So what I, what I was doing before is I used this little minimize button so I can see both of them like this. So I've got this one and then here's this one up here that I was fiddling with earlier. And if I had two monitors, which would be ideal, I would pull this one over to my other monitor so I could see it and this one. But in one screen, it's really hard to do that. I mean, you'd have to sandwich them in, in between. But I've noticed that, um, at least in this version, this little maximize button, you want to make sure that you have it uh, restored. So if you select it again, it's going to restore them to a smaller version. My problem is though, is I, I have, if I open two separate Excel files, I, I, won't, I won't ever be able to get them, to see them both at the same time. Because one will come up or the other will come up, but it, well, I can't get to. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to open up this one. Let me go ahead and maximize it. So it opens up like this, right, Pam? You've opened up the file, and now you're going to open up another file. Mm -hmm. uh, I am <laughs> going to do that. Uh, yeah, I'll just do a new one. Thank you for that. Sometimes you have to shout to get it through my thick skull. All right, so I've got two files open and I want to see both of them. So to do that, instead of choosing this top one, this top maximize and restore, there's a smaller one that you'll see directly underneath it. And that's for the actual workbook. So if you choose that middle option, which is restore, you'll see how now you have a um, title bar that you can drag it and I can see this back one. And then what I would want to do is drag it to your other monitor so you've got this one open and then this one open. But you have to select, um, I don't have it, but now I do, this one right here. I have two monitors, but I'm still not sure because are, do you have two separate files open there? Yes. Or are you within the same workbook? No, I have two separate files open. This is EX04, Cards and Gifts, and this one is Book 4. Okay. They're two separate files. and. If they're maximized like this, you can't see them unless you come down to the bottom and click on it and then you can see the thumbnails. You could do that. But if you want to see them um, as a workbook within Microsoft Excel, you have to choose this option right up here. It's right underneath the close. It's called Restore Window. It's not the top one, but it's the one right underneath it. And if you choose that, then you can see how they uh, fit. And because I've already rearranged mine, yours will probably look more <laughs> like that. You know, you're not going to see it very easily. You're going to have to click on it and drag it and reposition it. But if you have two monitors, um, I would just drag one off to the other side and keep one on the other monitor. Couldn't you also do that split screen thing you were talking about? No, the arrange. You could do the arrange. The split is going to split one document. Oh, okay. So, so the arrange, whatever it was. Yeah, you could do arrange. You could choose view, but that will only do it on one monitor. Yeah. Right. So she could choose arrange all and choose uh, which way she wants to arrange it. So vertical, horizontal. So here you've got side by side. You could do it that way. But they still have to be restored before you can do that. They can't be maximized or it won't work correctly. So. Does that help, Pam? Yes. 
You have to give it a try on your end and see what you come up with. Any other questions for me? Yes. Um, not a question, You know, every time you were pressing enter, it goes down to the next cell. Uh huh. I don't like that because I'm going that way. Yeah. And so I always turn that off in advance, options in advance. Yeah, you could do that. And then I also turn on the, there at the very bottom, I also turn on the um, navigation, transition navigation key so that your page up, your page down, and your homework. Yeah, you, you could do that. that. Well, I tell you why. You don't have to press enter. You could press control enter and it would stay on the same line. And that's kind of what uh, I see a lot of Excel users use is the control enter because it's the same thing as choosing the green check mark up at the top. Control enter is the same thing as selecting that green check mark. So if you're typing text in, you can do control enter. And as far as going backwards, um, tab goes forwards, shift tab goes backwards and that's kind of the shortcuts but yeah you can go up to options and customize it that's why there's options for you so you can customize it to your preferences I don't know if um, I've you know those are things I can't see people do I only have looked at the documents themselves to see if you're putting in numbers you're just using your arrow keys yeah if you're putting in numbers yep um, yeah it just kind of depends on uh, the person. Mm -hmm. It's whatever you're used to. Yeah, it's just what you're comfortable with. But certainly, if you don't like it to go down to the next line, uh, you could do Control Enter, or you could go to Options and tell it, you know, not to do a hard Enter uh, when you press the Enter key. Either way, it's a, just a personal preference. Can you also? I must be. I must have missed something in the whole where you had the January, February, and you filled it on because I can't get it to do that. Okay. Yeah. When you type a sequence, so. You type January in, and it'll even work if you don't spell it correctly, too, by the way. <laughs> Which, not that I've ever done that, but if you ever misspell something, it will still work. Uh, there's a couple of handles. You, you don't want the move handle. The move handle is four arrows pointing in each direction. You want the cross which is in the, the right hand corner of the cell. It looks like a black box. If you click and hold and you drag to the right, It'll follow your sequence. Yeah, it. I didn't catch the cross piece. Yeah, it's the cross. And that will do it on anything. If you type uh, a day of the week, it'll do that. Um, if you do number sequences, you know, if you've got several numbers in your sequence and you fill down, it'll do that as well. Uh, anything that has a sequence to it. it doesn't even have to be a number. I mean, you could do black, blue, black and it will repeat it for you. It's just got a, a nice little brain. It knows what you want to do <laughs> most of the time. Sometimes it knows what you want to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If you guys are working on a document and you get stuck, feel free to call or email. I'll be happy to, you know, I'm pretty good about replying as quickly as I can and I'll be happy to come over and help if you got something that you're working on. Remember when you save things as well, if you're sharing documents back and forth, you don't have to save them as an Excel workbook. You can save them as a PDF. You can also save it as a Word document so you can, you know, work in between. Um, applications as well. Sometimes I like to do PDFs because it it takes out all the spacing and your margins and it's just a really clean version and you can't really go wrong with a PDF file.